The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We have concluded chapter 7. We will be discussing chapter 8. Aksara Brahma Yoga. Yoga of Imperishable Brahm. So we have seen in chapter 7, Bhagavan started giving his identity. As we have discussed in chapter 6, Bhagavan asked us to meditate on his true form. And now Bhagavan is explaining what his real nature is. So in chapter 7, he has given the outline of his real self. And he says, I in my real nature is unborn and immutable. In other words, I am the source of all things and beings that you see. There is nothing beyond me. There is no source of me. I am the fundamental reality. So Bhagavan had established the first basis that he in his true nature is beginningless. Therefore, he is birthless. Therefore, he is endless. Therefore, he is infinite. But everything is strung into him by maya. By power of his maya, he projects this world of plurality. And this maya had three gunas, sattvarajas and tamas, which then manifest into is lower prakriti and higher prakriti. The lower prakriti is what we experience every day. We interact with this world outside. We know this world. So the lower prakriti is the world of things and beings which we see outside. And the knower in you is the higher prakriti. So that's the fundamental truth Bhagavan has revealed in a thumbnail sketch. But in the end of the chapter... He made a statement that one who is freed from this duality, this confusion of duality that I and the world are two separate entities, he will come to know what is Brahman, what is that ultimate reality which is immutable, imperishable, unborn, endless, infinite. He will also come to know the total knowledge, what is to be known and what is the knowledge. Then he says you will come to know actions in their totality. He also said that you will know Adibhuta, the objects of this world. They will also know Adidaivam, the sense perception. And also he will know the Adiyagna, the instrument of comprehension. Bhagavan said, one who has known the reality in its totality, he will know the six aspects of the reality. If you only know one aspect of the reality, then your understanding is very narrow. Or you have a narrow perspective on the reality. But to know the reality in, in total, Bhagavan basically indicated the one has to know all six of them. You have to see the reality from all six points of view. It is something like that classical story of six blind men go out to find out what that animal, which everybody calls elephant, is. And they experience that elephant. Somebody touches tail, somebody touches trunk, somebody touches leg, somebody touches belly, somebody tusk. And they all come up with their own definition of what the elephant is all about. But once it, if you look at the reality from the narrow perspective, from the physical world, or the emotional world, or the intellectual world, 
then you will have a very narrow perspective. You will know the aspect of the Bhagavan, but not Bhagavan himself. Therefore, say, to know Brahman, you have to know me in my totality, that I pervade in all the six aspects of this reality, which we call our world. So Bhagavan had created curiosity in Arjuna. Arjuna had never heard this term before, Adibhutam, Adiyagnam, Adidaivam. And then in the end, Bhagavan also told him that even if someone comes to comprehend all these six, in the time of death, in the last minute, then also he will be liberated from his limitations. My limitations are because I'm seeing this reality through my narrow perspective. From my own individual ego's perspective, that creates my limitation. So we're going to overcome these limitations. And you can overcome that limitation any time in your life, even at the last moment. And it seems like Arjuna got very interested in the last statement that if I even know this at the last moment, that I will be liberated. So this chapter opens with Arjuna's question. He is literally restating everything Bhagavan said in last two verses of chapter 7. Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna said, Kim Tad Brahma. What is that Brahman you keep referring to? Kim Adhyatma. And what is Adhyatma? How this Adhyatma relates to Brahma? Kim Karma. What is action? Adi Bhutam Chakim. Also, what is pertaining to this world of objects? Proktam Adi Daivam Kimuchit. And what do we call Adi Daivam? Adi Yagnaha Katham Ko Atra Dehe Asmin Madhusudana. And in this body, as Dehi that I am, that I'm identified with this body, Adi Yagnaha Katham. What is Adi Yagna here? Prayana kale cha kasam niyosi niyatatma bihi. And I want to know how one can know even at the time of death. Prayana kale, at the time of starting your journey from this state of existence to the next. So these are the fundamental questions Arjuna asks. They are just repetition of Bhagavan already said the one who knows this six. He will be liberated. He will achieve that ultimate moksha. Bhagavan now answers Arjuna's question. He gives the answer in a very brief. But then he dwells on the last question. How can one realize this reality in the time of death? So most of the first part of chapter just deals with that. Sri Bhagavan Vacha. Bhagavan said. And last time I think Govind asked why with we ask keep referring Krishna as Sri Bhagavana. So Bhagavan is obviously in our day-to-day understanding is God. But the scriptures and Puranas have defined the word Bhagavan as one who has all the bhag, all the wealth. The bhag is wealth. One who has all the wealth is Bhagavan. So there are six wealths described in Puranas. Beauty, knowledge, strength, wealth, fame, and renunciation. So we may have one of them or all of them, but we have in a limited quantity. We have limited beauty, limited wealth, limited fame, limited renunciation, but one who has unlimited all of this wealth is Bhagavan. And Vishnu Puran describes Bhagavan or defines Bhagavan as the one who knows creation and dissolution. One who is aware of what is creation and dissolution. One who knows future prosperity and also adversity, what's coming. And one who is also aware of what is ignorance and what is illumination of all beings. In other words, one who is totally aware of all things that is happening is Bhagavan. Vedavya was also called Bhagwan because he apparently had all this quality. The Vedavya refers to Krishna as Bhagwan, and he realizes that Krishna also has all these qualities. And Krishna is considered Vishnu's avatar, so is Bhagwan Vedavya is considered Vishnu's avatar. Vishnu literally means one who permeates everywhere is Vishnu. 
और वन हु हैज अ लॉन्ग स्ट्राइड इज वैष्णव सो भगवान वेद व्यास रिफर्स टू लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज भगवान ऑल थ्रू आउट द भगवद गीता अर्जुन आई डज नॉट अर्जुन आई रिफर्स टू एम इज इज फ्रेंड इज केशवा मधुसूदना हरिसूदना पर वेद व्यास कंसिस्टेंटली कॉल्स हिम भगवान बिकॉज हिज रोल हियर इज अ टीचर is not of an ordinary teacher but the one who has the complete knowledge the total knowledge and therefore now the bhagwan watch one who knows all the six is now describing all the six qualities of the reality aksharam brahma paramam very simple definition that which is imperishable is brahman everything which is Conditioned by time, space, and causation is perishable because it is bound by time, bound by space, and bound by causation. Something has to cause that thing to come into existence. It exists in time and exists in space. But Bhagwan says, "Aksharam Brahma Paramam." That reality, Brahman, is beyond space, time, and causation. therefore it is no cause is uncaused cause of all things and beings but what is that brahma therefore it is the fundamental reality because you cannot go any further than that in your inquiry where things come from if i say thing i can figure out where it came from what it is made up of it is made up of molecules molecules are made of atoms atoms are made of quarks but when it comes to the last question where that reality comes from there is no further inquiry can be made so bhagwan said aksharam brahma param that where your inquiry stops is brahman that we cannot find what's beyond that or modern day physics they say we all the laws of relativity work till you come to the big bang and at that point all the science falls apart because that's beyond science that we know today so bhagwan said that fundamental reality is brahman swabhavah adhyatma uchchade and swabhav that which creates that sense of i is adhyatma therefore i call it my swabhav my nature with every thought that i have about myself that i thought there is something which is aware of that i thought that awareness is my real being so everything in a being when it comes to its core of its reality the core of its existence we want say that's adhyatma adhyatma is related to your own self and that's just swabhava that swabhava is adhyatma that reality which is pervading everywhere when you recognize its presence in you that is adhyatma bhut bhav udbhav kar visargah karma sangnitam karma in in our day to day language we call it action actually any activity that takes place is karma from our scriptures perspective in purva vimansa all the rituals when you perform is called karma when you perform all the yagnas and yagas and offerings all that is considered karma as your karma so will be your destiny purva mimansa says a man creates his own destiny creates his own body his mind his intellect his actions his prosperity through this karma so this karma kand is indicated in purva mimansa bhagwan shri krishna takes it to another level and he simply says visarga karma sangnitam that action which create change and create something bhut bhav udbhav kara that which creates things and beings is karma so from the ishwara's point of view the act of singularity becoming plurality is the ultimate karma so the kriya shakti of ishwara the creativity of ishwara to create something out of nothing is karma even at a micro level also if i put effort but has no results 
then those efforts are in vain. So they are not considered karma. So we ask somebody to do something and he may work very hard all day. At the end of the day, there is no result. You will consider that as futile labor. It's not worth anything. So it's not considered action. It just considers waste of time. If somebody says they have 10 years of experience, is it one year experience 10 times or 10 years experience one time? But if you keep doing the same thing without getting any further progress, then it's not really action. So if I put efforts and nothing happens, then it's not an action. If I put efforts or apply a force and results come as a change in the status of that thing or a being, then that's action. Visarga also means to give up. So something which I release or give up, offer to create change, but one says that's karma. Bhuta bhava udbhava kara visarga karma sangita. So it's a very positive definition of karma. The karma is not just laboring. Karma is something to create change. So my actions which create change in this world, in my own life, in my society, in my community, that will be considered karma. That karma will build my future destiny for who I will be. We'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschid Dukkha Bhag Om Shantihi 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hiyo